Okay, this is the uh, second part of, a, of a, the module on crystal structure for ceramic materials. Uh, we're going to just begin uh, reminding you that we, we had talked about three types of crystal, or crystal structures for ceramics. The AX type uh, was the first one, and that was structures that arose from an equal number of uh, cations and anions. And there's basically uh, three structures that I want you to be familiar with uh, of these class. So the first is the rock salt structure, uh, which is uh, uh, named after uh, sodium chloride, which is salt. And so it looks like, if, if you want to look at these uh, green chlorine atoms, uh, it looks like an FCC structure of chlorine with um, uh, uh, the sodium ions sitting at the edges and then the center um, uh, uh, of, of the structure. So that's one class of structure. Another is referred to as the zinc blend structure. It looks similar in that the, the anions are sitting at the sites of an FCC lattice, but now the, the um, cations, the zinc cations, sit at the tetrahedral sites uh, in the structure. And then finally, there's the cesium chloride structure where we have a cubic lattice uh, made up of the chlorine atoms with the uh, cesium atom in the center uh, at the octahedral site. So those are the, the sort of three main AX type structures that will arise. And, and I'll just say up front that there's more structures that are out there that we just can't talk about, but I just want to make you aware of some. Um, the next class are these AMXP structures. So remember that the A, uh, even though it's a little counterintuitive, is the, the ions. So that we have the M number of I, uh, cations per P number of anions. And so uh, in this case, the number of cations and anions are not equal. So I'm only going to show you two structures. There's more than this, but the one that your book talks about is the fluorite structure. This is for uh, calcium fluoride, which is CaF2. So there's going to be twice as many fluorine atoms as there are calcium atoms. And so this is, this is the structure that you can see that emerges. Okay, uh, another type of structure is called the rutile structure, and it's uh, one that's uh, taken on by titanium dioxide, uh, also TiO2. Uh, so uh, same ratio, these, both these structures would be the AX2 type structures. Uh, in this case, you have a, uh, this is a tetragonal cell, and then, um, but, but actually defined by the titanium uh ions, which is a little different than in this structure, which was primarily defined by the fluorine ions. And, and then the reds show the oxygen. So that's the rutile structure. And again, there's, there's far more structures than we could possibly cover here, but I'm just giving you a flavor of some of the complexity that emerges. As we go to even more complex structures, now we're talking about the A, M, B, N, X, P type structures, where A and B are different cations, X still being the anion. Um, and the one your book talks about is the perovskite structure. Uh, um, and this would be for, the one we're looking at here is for barium titanate. Uh, and so here you have would have barium ions at the corner. At the faces, you'd have your oxygen ions. And at the center, you'd have your titanium ion. Um, th these are actually a really interesting class of materials with respect to a lot of recent development in solar cells. Um, and then I'll give you a final sort of uh, even more complicated look at what's called a spinel structure. Uh, this is uh, comprised of three elements. Your anion is the oxygen, and these are the red atoms that you can see, or the red, yeah, the red ions. The blue, inside the blue octahedrons are contained an iron ions. And inside the yellow um, tetrahedrons are create, contained the zinc ion. So this is actually a, a zinc ferrite structure. And a lot of other structures uh, uh, adopt the spinel structure as well. And again, this is just a, an extremely small subset of the possible structures that are out there. But I do want you to kind of be aware that, number one, they're very complicated. But number two, almost all of them are based on some of the fundamental structures that we have uh, already talked about in, in re respect to metals. Okay.
So now let's move on to talk a little bit about structure prediction. Um, it's actually straightforward. We first just need to identify the type of compound that we're dealing with, whether it's an AX type compound, an AMXP type compound, uh, or an AMBNXP type compound. We then identify the ionic radii of the components and compute the appropriate ratios. And then we look it up, those ratios up in a table um, to, to get the structure. Now in this class, we're only going to look, we only have a table for the AX structure, and that's all I'm going to expect you to be aware of in terms of determining the crystal structure. So uh, we'll do a quick example again with uh, NaCl. We already know what the answer is, but we're going to work through the process. So we see that there's an equal number of cations and anions. So that's going to tell us that we have an, an AX structure. We can compute, or we look up basically, the radius of the sodium ion and the radius of the chlorine ion and see that they're 0.102 nanometers and 0.181 nanometers respectively. And we can compute the radius uh, and we find that it's 0.564, sorry, the, the ratio of the radii. And we look that up in our table that's in our textbook and it shows that if we have a radii uh, ratio of 0.564, we're in the range where that would uh, give us the rock salt structure. So fairly straightforward. Okay, just like we did for the case of metals, we can use the crystal structure of uh, the ceramics to compute the theoretical density. Uh, the formula is very similar, a little bit of additional complexity, but not too much. So this is the formula uh, for the theoretical density, density of a crystalline ceramic material, uh, where N prime is the number of formula units within the cell. So if we were talking about NaCl, that would be how many NaCls are there in the unit cell. Uh, the VUC is just the volume, volume of the unit cell. Na is Avogadro's number. The, this uh, sum of A sub A is just the sum of all the anion weights in the formula unit. So in the case of NaCl, it would just be the weight of Cl in that, uh, you, the atomic weight of Cl. And then we have the cation weights um, that exist in the formula unit. And of course, if it's just NaCl, then we only have one cation in the unit. And so we just need to have the weight of uh, sodium in there. So let's do, a, let's calculate that quickly. So let's do an example with sodium, or sorry, with sodium chloride. So we know it has a rock salt structure. We have already talked about, we know the uh, ionic radii of the, ions, Na plus and Cl minus, and we can just look up the atomic weights of sodium and chlorine, and they're given there 22.99 for sodium uh, and 35.45 grams per mole for chlorine. And then we have our formula for density. So we want to figure out what all the values are, plug them in and try to compute the density. So the first thing we need to find is the unit cell volume. And so to do that, we can just need to compute um, A, because this is a cubic uh, structure. So if we have A, then we just know the volume is A cubed. So here, here we'll have a top-down view, basically. So we're looking down on this, let's say, this top face. And this distance is A, that's the lattice constant. And we can observe that that distance must be two times, there's two times the radius of the uh, sodium ion, there's one of the radius of the chlorine, and one radius of the chlorine. So it's two times the, the sum of the radii. And we can plug our numbers in and compute that and find that the, the lattice constant for, for NaCl is 0.566 nanometers, which then we can compute the volume of the unit cell as just A cubed and give us, gives us 0.181 uh, cubic nanometers. Now we need to figure out, we just had a unit cell, how many formula units are in that, that unit cell? Well, let's count the number of chlorine ions. So we have, uh, remember the chlorine ions here are the red ones. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the corner. Each atom on the corner it represents really one eighth of an atom because uh, it's joined up. Uh, it, it exists in actually eight different unit cells. And then we have six face atoms, one, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of those contains half an atom, so we sum those up and we see that there's four atoms. Do the same thing for the sodium ions, and we see that there's one in the center, so that gets a full count. And then we see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, 
9, 10, 11, 12 edge atoms. Each edge atom is one fourth of an atom. So we sum those and find that there's four atoms, which which we expect, right? We if we have a unit cell and we know it's NaCl. We expect there to be uh, electro neutrality, right? An equal balance of positive and negative charges. What that means is that we have four NaCl units. So that's the formula units that we're talking about. So the n prime in the equation above is just four. Okay, so we just substitute all the things we just calculated uh, into that equation. There's our four uh, formula units. Uh, this is the sum of the cations, in this case, Na+, plus, and uh, the weights of, of Na+, plus, and this is the weight of Cl-. Uh, we sum those up, multiply them times N'. prime. There's our volume uh, of the unit cell. There's Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23 units per mole. And then I just added a conversion factor to convert cubic nanometers to cubic centimeters. If you plug those numbers all in, you end up with a density that's 2.14 grams per cubic centimeter, which is very close to the um, actual measured value of um, uh, sodium chloride. Okay. We've talked a lot about crystal structure. The next thing we talked about in metals was what happens if they're not a perfect crystal? What about defects? So we're going to talk a little bit about defects here. Um, and just like we had in metals, point defects can occur in ceramics. There can be vacancies, both for cations and anions. Um, and so what you're looking at here is an anion vacancy, and there's a cation vacancy. So we've removed that orange atom from here, and then here we've removed the blue atom. There also can exist interstitials, but typically those are only for uh, cations. And the reason is that the cations are smaller. The anions are usually too big to, to form interstitials very frequently. So uh, here's a cation interstitial where we've smashed one of these sort of blue atoms into, into a, a non-lattice spot. The, the feature about um, defects in ceramics, though, is that they have to retain electroneutrality. You can't just remove uh, a cation or an anion or anything like that and just say, there it is, there's my defect. You have to maintain electroneutrality. And that gives rise then to basically two classes of point defects uh, in ceramics. And the first is called a Frenkel defect. And what it is is a cation vacancy interstitial pair. So here's here's what we're looking at. We, we created a vacancy. Uh, there's a cation vacancy, and then we put the, the cation uh, in an interstitial form somewhere else. So effectively, in this uh, Frenkel defect, we removed a positive charge and added a positive charge. So there was a net charge change of none, nothing, uh, zero. So we have retained electroneutrality. The second class of defect... Oops, let me let me back up. I guess uh, if you just like we did with vacancies, this is the concentration of Frankel defects. There's an equilibrium concentration of Frankel defects, just like there was an equilibrium concentration of vacancies in metals, and that can be computed just with the, the exact same form, except now instead of a vacancy formation energy, you have a Frankel energy, uh, Frankel defect formation energy, uh, and then you can compute the the concentration of Frankel defects in the system. Okay. The next type of defect is called a Schottky defect, and again, it, it's it, it's formed such that it retains electroneutrality. So, here is our uh, Schottky defect. Uh, it's a cat, cation anion vacancy pair. What mean what that means is we removed here we removed the anion, and then to so we removed the negative charge, and then. Here we remove the cation, the positive charge, so that we retain uh, electroneutrality. And that has the exact same form also in terms of the equilibrium concentration as the vacancies did and as the Frenkel defects. Uh, it's just simply E to the negative um, shock key uh, formation energy over KT. Okay, finally, the last thing, um, I want to talk about point defects uh, specifically with respect to impurities. So we've talked about sort of how vacancies, cation and anion vacancies form or, uh, or have to form in order to, to maintain electroneutrality, but there can also be substitutional cation or anion impurities. Um, and there can also be interstitial cation or anion impurities. In general, as we said before, um, we don't get um, 
interstitial anions, at least in the self-interstitial, but it's certainly possible that we could find other anions that might be smaller that we might be able to get to, to form uh, impurities there. The key feature here is that whatever we have as a impurity, substitutional or otherwise, we still have to maintain electroneutrality. So let's go back to our working example of sodium chloride. If we have a substitutional cation impurity where we want to substitute calcium, which has a a, uh, a two plus charge in for the sodium ions, which had a one plus charge, we can do that. So there we did it. We took this atom that was a sodium and we replaced it with a calcium, but now we have too much positive charge. So it has to come with a cation vacancy there to maintain charge neutrality. Similarly, with the anions, there's our impure, uh, there's our pure um, structure. We want to replace one of the chlorines with an oxygen ion, which has a, a charge of uh, two minus instead of just a one minus. So we remove that. So we, sorry, we, we replace it here, but now we've added too much negative charge. So we have to remove an, an, uh, an anion from this location so that we maintain charge neutrality. So hopefully that uh, uh, makes clear at least the basics of ceramic uh, crystals. And, and uh, now we can kind of move on to talk about other classes of uh, ceramic materials.